68 million people in our country cannot get a loan from a bank. So today, we're part of a wave of 800 such organizations across the United States that give out millions of dollars a year to the poor of the U.S., to immigrants in the U.S., to farmers, to Native Americans, to inner city blacks, to Asian immigrants. And what we're seeing is this huge, powerful, high potential mechanism called microfinance addressing problems in one of the richest countries in the world. Let me, let me just turn to one practical example here at BYU. It's been going for about a decade now. It's called Micro Business Mentors. And it was launched by some MPA and MBA students in my microfinance course in 2002, 2003, where we would train, we would recruit Latinos, Spanish speaking folks, we would prepare and design a variety of training programs to help them learn to be micro entrepreneurs. Not to start Apple Computer, not to start General Motors, but to start something simple and small as a little family enterprise or a little income generating project. And we launched that that year. And since then, we've been going strong for a decade now with hundreds of students at Brigham Young University and Utah Valley University collaborating together to serve the needs of this immigrant population. So we began to reach out and find those folks and train them in small groups, first four or five or six or seven people. And we would take them through eight modules of entrepreneurship. And at the end of that series of trainings, which lasted usually it was a Friday night three-hour, two-hour training program here at the Marriott School at BYU. At the end of that, when they were finished and they'd produced a tiny little business plan, a simple startup business strategy, and we'd reviewed it, we would then hold a graduation ceremony. They would bring their family members, they would bring their spouses, they would bring their relatives, their friends, their neighbors. For many of them, this was the first time they ever graduated from anything and we created little certificates to give them and present, take photos and celebrate with balloons, with mariachi music, with great Mexican food. And it was a time of rejoicing and big expectations. And at the end of that graduation, we would have each one come up and we would give them $500 as a micro loan. It was hard to get money. People said we couldn't do that. We couldn't get funding from the community, the city, or the banks. So I launched the first few loans myself. My wife was not really thrilled with that. She was afraid they wouldn't pay them back, but 100% of those loans were paid back with interest. And eventually we began to gain some credibility in the community, and we got the credit union locally to give us some funding, $10,000, and then a consortium of local banks in Utah Valley said, we will give you some money. And they each put in about 5,000. So we had 35,000 from the banks to use as loan capital and uh, other financial institutions. And little by little, this thing has rolled out. We've had now hundreds of students from BYU be trainers who are fluent in Spanish. We've also taught some groups in English. We've had immigrants from Asia and from Africa and from Eastern Europe that didn't speak Spanish, so we've had special programs for them, special modules of training for them. We've given loans out to people in their 50s and 60s who'd never started a business and never been employed. And we gave loans out to 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds from Guatemala, from El Salvador, or whatever, whose uh, great desire was to have a better future for themselves and their children. Some folks ask me, Warner, why do you work so much with students? They're young, they're naive, they're in school. They don't have time, they don't have money. And I say, they're the perfect focus for a revolution. They're the exact kind of people one wants to find in their life when they're mobilizing to make, make change, to improve society. College is exactly the right time. While they're young, innocent, optimistic and full of vim and vinegar. If I reflect back on the last couple of decades, 
I see tons of productivity out of BYU students who got into microfinance, who went on a summer internship, who heard Muhammad Yunus speak, or John Hatch of Finca. And these students came to me afterwards saying, all right, I want to do this stuff. What can I do to make a difference? What courses should I take? And we invented new courses. We invented a course in microfinance, the first one at any university in the US. Then we started the social entrepreneurship course. Then we did a third world development course. Then we did a micro franchise course. And we've kept designing, implementing, experimenting, and rolling out numerous courses in this field to fight poverty and to empower women especially and to use our God-given skills and use our academic experience, use the courses students are taking and use their passion and dreams to implement change all over the world. Out of that effort, out of that service, learning, beyond the outreach for attempting to do these things, we found students' learning experiences were more meaningful, their education was deeper, their love of humanity was greater, their sense of self-worth and their potential to do more in the world besides get a job, besides go to law school and become an attorney, besides become an entrepreneur with your MBA degree or with your nursing degree to serve in a hospital. They found they could do tons of other stuff and make the world a better place. And so along with our little efforts to start doing microfinance out of a college class, out of one little university here in the West, we're now seeing lots of other organizations in the country get into this enterprise of microfinance for the poor in their own communities. We've, we've uh, overcome lots of hurdles. We've defied those who said this would never work here. And now we're building credibility and we've impacted thousands of people in the process. If you count borrowers, their children, their spouses, and their ability to have a sustainable future where they feel secure, where they have three meals a day. That's what this is all about. It's the children. We're doing this really for the next generation here in America, and it's going to work.